we've had a number of questions come over the last few weeks about what level do I need to set my Tascam or my Zoom H1 to when I'm using this mic to get the best sound. Well, I think it's time to cover that topic. Let's look at setting your input level for dialogue. Check this out. Okay, we're gonna break this into two pieces. There are a lot of people here with short attention spans. So for those with short attention spans, here is the short version. I cannot give you a number, a magical number for each device out there to get great audio. It all depends on a number of things. A, where you put the microphone. B, what your talent's voice is like. C, what microphone you're using. D, what recorder you're using. There are so many factors. So, but here is a, I think a pretty good rule of thumb to go with. What you wanna do is go ahead and get your talent mic'd up. You want to get your mic placed wherever that may be. If it's a lav, you know, place it wherever you need to. If it's a shotgun up above. Um, then you will go and you will work your input level or gain level at different levels while your talent speaks. And what you want to aim for generally is peaking, that is the, the loudest sounds, to come somewhere between minus 18 and minus 15 dB. So if you can do that, I think you'll get a nice clean signal. Then you can bring it in post-processing, normalize it, and you should be good to go. Now, for those of you that want a little more in-depth, stick around, let's talk about some experiences I had recently that kind of highlighted the importance of proper gain staging. Now, last week or so has been pretty exciting for me in terms of learning new things about audio. And last weekend, it started when I helped out a tech crew for a music festival. And we had this one band come in uh, named the Prodigals. They sort of build themselves as a jig punk band. Um, it, regardless of whether you like that kind of music or not, stick around. I think there's a, there's a lesson to be learned here. And I, let me just play for you a little clip here and see if you can identify the issue with the audio here. Now, just to give you some background information, what I did is I actually hooked in my little Zoom H1 to the soundboard. So I was getting a, a direct analog feed off of the soundboard into my recorder. I had the levels set down, so I had plenty of headroom, uh, even when they were playing really loud. Okay, did you notice when the drummer hit the tom, that's on the left-hand side of the screen there, that there was a strange noise, and that was actually clipping. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what happened, where in the chain the clipping was happening, but I have my suspicion, I have my hypothesis, and that is that the audio guy, that the guy was running the board, was having a really hard time because different instruments kept feeding back the room the room was tough from the start so he had his work cut out for him and we're not going to name any names because i'm not sure that i would have done any better in this circumstance um but i was there for the sound check and helped out with that um but i'm not i'm not really a live sound guy so he was the board operator and uh you know, he'd set the gain on one of the instruments and then he'd move to the next and so on and so forth until he had this mix. And what happened was we'd start getting this horrible, horrible feedback. It was just a hot, ringing, feeding back mess in this room. And it was just, he, he was on the board the entire show tweaking the levels on things because we'd lose the bass and you'd have to crank up the bass on a bass solo and then you'd start getting other stuff feeding back. And anyway, so I think what was happening, and this is my hypothesis, that uh, didn't push the gain staging way too hard. So what he should have done, or what I should have done, is taken the gain for each of the instruments, and when we were doing the original sound check, pull back on that gain a little bit so that you were clearly in a, in a state where, you know, even when they were pushing, you wouldn't be at a point where you'd be feeding back. And then, of course, you could move the fader from there to, to, to mix the entire band once you brought the other instruments in. And I think that's what was happening, is just pushing the gain way too hard on um, all of the instruments there. My brother's producing an album and invited me up to spend a couple of days with him, uh, helping out a little bit. And we got to play with some really awesome gear that he's got, um, had a great time. And most of this gear is definitely pro level gear. So for example, he's got this universal audio audio interface, uh, universal audio outboard um, mic preamp. He's got an AKG C414 large diaphragm condenser mic. Lots of great stuff to play with. Probably not outfitted like one of the, you know, the major studios, but definitely, 
gear in the same range. So it was a lot of fun. But one of the things that probably struck me the most was not so much the gear itself, but some of the techniques that he used. And probably the biggest thing was setting his input level. And I definitely learned a lesson here because I've been setting my input levels pretty hot. That is to say, probably so that my peaks for dialogue came into the minus six to minus 10 range, but he definitely set his way down lower. So he was kind of peaking at minus 20 to minus 15. And then he came in, as a result of that, he would get clean audio without distortion that he could then bring in and tweak and sculpt and, and kind of do pretty much what everything he wanted with it. So definitely a lesson learned for me there. With dialogue, I think it is helpful to back off a little bit on the input level. So a lesson I've learned and what I'm going to do going forward to try and uh, improve my audio is be a little bit more careful about gain staging. And what I mean by that is setting the input level when you're getting ready to record. So going forward, my plan is this, and this is what I've done in this episode, is set the microphone up and place it in front of your talent. However, you know, you need to place that, whether it's a lav or, or some other type of mic. Once you have that set, get the talent in their spot, in their block, or their, you know, hitting their mark, and have them start talking in the voice that they're going to be using. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna be tweaking my input gain or my input level until I get the peaks of their voice at about minus 12 to minus 18 dB. And you can see I did that sort of on this file here. I was playing around with it. We got this big spike here at minus uh, five. And then we came back down and about here is where we sort of hit our stride. And that's the input level we ended up using. So those numbers on the dial, the only purpose for those is to help you recreate a recording if you're gonna go back and record the exact same thing in the exact same spot with the exact same talent with the exact same microphone. So they have no meaning beyond that, really. Um, aside from maybe telling you, okay, we're, we're at the top of the range for this particular preamp or, or not, but they don't, they're not any sort of standard numbering. So it's not like anyone could tell you, yeah, I always set for my voice, I always set my input level to eight. And that works on this device all the time. Well, that's not always the case because it depends on the microphone that you're using and it depends on this, you know, the place that you're recording and so on and so forth. So, and anyway, let me just show you what I would do post-processing wise here. Now, once we got our input level where we wanted it, you can see things look pretty clean here and pretty consistent. But if we did have an anomaly like this, which again, you're not gonna have if you get your gain stage set right, um, we could always come in here and what I would do is before I did any processing, I'd pull this down a little bit. So I can just highlight that and pull it down and maybe just set it to, you know, bring it down until it's about minus 12 dB here. And then, you know, I just run through it to make sure it didn't make it sound weird. But again, since, since we're not even using that, we're just gonna use our audio from the point we got our gain stage set where we wanted it. We're gonna cut all the rest of that out. And just let me show you how I process the rest of this here. So the first thing I would do is select all. Then I'd come up here to my favorites menu here in Adobe Audition. Again, the same principles apply regardless of what audio editor you're using. And I would normalize to minus three dB. And the reason I do that is it still gives me plenty of headroom here. And the reason that I don't, from this point forward, normalize to 0.1 dB is that I was still getting a lot of clipping after I applied some more processing. So um, we're gonna try going with normalizing to minus three dB from this point forward and seeing if that gets us cleaner audio. And I have a suspicion that it will. After that, I'll usually apply a little bit of a compressor here. I like this tube modeled compressor. So you can see in my case here, again, my peaks are probably, now that I've normalized, I think I'm coming up to about minus five, but let's, let's compress anything that's over about minus eight right here. So we're just going to clean, you know, sort of even out those peaks here. So we got that too. And you can also just type this in minus eight. And then I'm going to set my ratio to 2.5. That's just a ratio that I use. And again, we have other videos that talk about how to use compressors, but this is just again, to give you a little illustration of what I would do here. So let's play through this and watch to see what the compressor does. And again, what I'm doing is I would have my talent talk at their regular level. And while they're doing that, I'm going to be tweaking this input level here until I get the peak somewhere around minus 12 to minus 18. So this looks like a pretty good level. Okay, so it's done a nice job just sort of evening some of that stuff out. So that's great. We will go with that. And then again, for my particular voice, I always seem to need a little bit of de-essing. 
And I've sort of worked out what seems to be working pretty well for my voice, and that is a center frequency of 8,000 or 8 kilohertz. And if I usually put the band at um, 4 kilohertz, that seems to do a pretty good job, and I, I drop that down some. And that sounds, that get the peak somewhere around minus 12 to minus 18. So this looks like a, that seems to do a pretty nice job on my voice, kind of mellowing out some of the S's that just get super sizzly and don't sound great at all. Then next after that, I'll drop down here to special and we're gonna use our mastering plugin. And then what I do here is I actually run through this and listen for any distortion while I tweak this loudness maximizer. So what this is gonna do is prevent us from actually clipping past zero dB um, while it's bringing the levels on everything up. So it's kind of, in some ways it's sort of um, it's sort of like a, an extreme compressor, but it also, you know, it kind of gives that sense of presence. The voice is really there. And I, I used to push this really hard as well, but you can still get plenty of clipping if you do. So what I want to do is pretty much find the hottest peak in my audio clip and make sure that I get that so that it's not clipping. So I'm going to bump this up to maybe 20 and let's see what we get there. This looks like a pretty good level there. I just exceeded. Okay, that's getting pretty close. I might want to pull that back just a touch. Try that again. This looks like a pretty good level there. I just exceeded. Okay, seems like we're getting enough headroom there still. So that's about what I would do there. Then I would go ahead and apply these. And there's my finished audio signal. Go ahead and save that and we should be good to go. Well, thanks for checking this out. I hope you found that helpful. If you have not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.